Amen, amen. The song says, there is no greater love than that one that you have for me. Not even your mama's love can top that. Daddy's love can't top that. Brother and sister's love can't top that. Only the love that the Lord has for you. Grace and joy, family. Today I just want to acknowledge our pastor who is absent doing the Lord's work in South Africa. Still want to give him thanks for giving me this opportunity to stand before his church and preach. I want to thank Sister Wilson for just sharing him with us all the time. Thank you, Sister Wolf. I want to acknowledge my queen. I want to stand up. You all right? <laughs> and little Liv, too. Girl, girl's a handful. <laughs> Already breaking the bank. <laughs> but God will provide. We want to thank the visitors for coming today. We are in an expository teaching and preaching church. We believe in going through every book of the Bible, chapters at a time, comma by comma, and line by line. But we can please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Today's message is coming out of Luke chapter 16, starting at verse 19. And we'll end up at verse 31. We are God is signified by saying, Amen. And it reads, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, lived in luxury every day. At the gates was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered in sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham afar with Lazarus at his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in anguish in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember, remember that you, your lifetime, you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted. And you are, and besides all this between you and a great uh, chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here cannot, nor can anyone cross over there. To he, he answered, <clears throat> then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, father, he said. But if someone from the dead 
goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone's raised from the dead. Amen. I didn't I didn't know what to tag this message but I think I want to tag it don't go to hell Here we see Jesus talking to his disciples about the two lives of two men one ends up in hell and the other in heaven. One was rich and the other had nothing. Here Jesus tells his disciples this parable as the Pharisees gathered around. Jesus says in verse 15, for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to the sight of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus taught about the dangers of the love of money he taught about the treacherous nature of riches. Jesus, Jesus said this to teach, to teach the Pharisees this is not just about an inward, an outward appearance, but it's also about the heart. A cry for mercy takes place from one of these men. There are some things we need to know to avoid this place called hell. And once we bring it to light, I pray that we warn others. Verse 19, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. See, it is no sin to be rich and have nice things. Now this does not mean that God loved this man more than the poor man. The Bible says he was dressed in purple and fine linen. And this man had it all. This man was suited and booted. This man had Rolexes, diamond rings. This man was identified among the rich and famous. You might say this man was royalty, clothed in purple linen. This man's sin was not that he had wealth, but that he only cared about himself and forgot about the hungry, forgot about the homeless, forgot about the poor around him this man only had eyes open for his own riches for his own possessions and this man forgot about the people of God now there might be now there might be someone here that is like this rich man only caring about what he drives someone in here today only cares about what he looks like. Someone here today only cares about what's in his house. See, when you should be caring about what's in your heart. See, you should not only be caring about what your possessions or how much you have in the bank, but you should be caring for the people of God. See, that's what this man's sin was. He had no care for the people of God. All he cared for was his own possessions, his own wealth. This man had no heart for God's people. See, at his gates laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. 
Here we have a poor man named Lazarus. Now this man was sick and had sores on his body. The Bible says this man was laid at the rich man's gate. Which just tells us that this man could not walk. This man needed to have people, compassionate people, carry him and lay him at the gates. See, this man had to be carried by others. See, there is, this tells us that there is compassionate people in this world. <clears throat> Those that are not able to help the poor with their possessions should help with their pain. Those that cannot lend a penny should lend a hand. Those who have not caring for themselves should, carry, should care for those. See, the Bible says, Lazarus, he was desiring, he was longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. See, this poor man, this poor beggar was hungry. But even in his state of hunger, the Bible says all he wanted was small crumbs, was small fragments that fell from the rich man's table. See, Lazarus did not look for a great portion of the rich man's table. But all he wanted was a small portion of crumbs, and he would be thankful for those crumbs. See, this poor man taught me that I must too be content with what God has given me. See, this man here teaches us that no matter in what state you may be, God still has you. Lazarus was poor in spirit. See, Matthew 5 and 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Lazarus was poor in spirit. Even in his pain, full of sores, he did not complain. He did not scream. He did not kick. All he wanted was crumbs from the table. He sat there at the gate silently, desiring to be fed only crumbs. Unlike us Americans, see, we're spoiled. See, we, ke we kick and scream and cry when things don't go our way. See, us Americans, we go into a, a frantic state when our bank accounts are low. You see, us Americans, we, get, we, we panic when our pantries are not full. See, us Americans, when we don't have five pairs of shoes, we complain. Us Americans, when we don't have a hundred shirts in our closet, we complain. Yeah. Us Americans want, want, and want. Yeah. See, that's how, that's how, that's how we are as Americans. See, I've been to other countries where they have nothing, but they're happy with what they have. I remember going to uh, my grandma's house when, in Mexico for the first time. And to me, it was a shock the way they lived. They had nothing. We would go to the back. There was a bathroom in the back full of roaches made out of wood. All they had was a hole in the ground to go to the bathroom. And this here reminded me of how oh, my grandma lived. And it reminded me of how spoiled I am here. Wanting and wanting, but not giving. I pray that this is not you today. See, this poor man had no money. He had no food, no family, no friends. 
all this man had the rags on his back. For some of us, this poor man, this, the, for some of us, the poor man or woman, this is what we see in the corner of Blackstone and Ashland. And we too, all we do is look at them and turn the other way. See, we too just ignore the ones in raggedy clothes in our communities. The only comfort this man would get was from some dogs that would come and lick his sores. But this would not be for long. Comfort was on the way. There would be no more suffering, no more pain. This man would hunger no more. See, the time came when the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. See, Lazarus died, but he did not have a funeral. See, he had no friends. He had no family. A friend in my library, Bernie McGee, said, they just took his body out of out and threw it into the valley of Geshem where he was thrown and burned. This is where they would throw bodies of the poor in this day. As soon as stepped through the doors of death, this is good news, angels came and they became his paw barriers. And they carried him to Abraham's bosom. You see, this man was no more suffering. This man was hungry no more. See, this man would be comforted by Abraham. See, what a picture of heaven. See, Abraham was a very wealthy man. And the wealthy man here on earth did not have compassion for him. But in heaven, the wealthy man embraced him. The wealthy man loved on him. The wealthy man carried him and held him in his bosom when he did not get that from the rich man here in, on earth. See, in heaven, there is no rich, no poor, no sickness, no disease, no hungry. In heaven, there will be no more begging, no more hate, no more selfishness. This is good news for the child of God. The rich man also died and was buried. See, the rich man had a funeral where he was only carried by men. This man had friends. This man had family. This man had thousands attend his funeral. His friends that he would invite for parties. His families that would come over and borrow his possessions. This man might have even had a preacher preach his burial. I wonder if they knew where this man's soul would spend eternity. So I ask you, do you live not caring about God and only care about your possessions? See, the angels did not carry this man. See, death does not favor rich or poor. The poor man. The poor man died and went to heaven. Now this man ended up in hell. See, there is no in between. The Bible says that once you die, you either go to heaven or hell. There is no in between. There is no purgatory. See, it don't matter who you are. Don't matter if you're skinny. Don't matter if you're fluffy. Don't matter if you're pretty. See, it doesn't matter who you are. Death comes to all. 
Jesus here is showing us that you can't have great wealth and pleasures in this world and still perish for all eternity in hell. <clears throat> See, hell is a place of torment. The Bible says the rich man went to hell. In Hades, where he was tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham afar with Lazarus by his side. See, the rich man was tormented. The word torment is to inflict with great bodily mental suffering, pain, misery, trouble, torture. And in hell, this does not stop. This is forever going. See, in hell, there is no comfort. See, in hell, there is no Abraham holding you on his bosom. See, in hell, all you see is dead people, demons. All you see is suffering. See, in hell, there is no comfort. Hell is a place where you remember. See, the Bible says he looked up and saw Abraham afar with Lazarus and his bosom. In hell, the soul of those that passed will remember the preacher. See, in hell, those that passed will remember the Christian and all the others that tried to warn them about this place. They will see the faces of people they ignored. They will see all the people they laughed at, all the people they mocked. They will even remember all the doors they slammed on the faces of the children of God. See, in hell, you will remember all the times you were in the club and missed Bible study. See, in hell, you will be remembered of all the times your family invited you to church and said no. See, in hell, you will remember all the times you skipped church just to have a drink. See, in hell, you will remember all the times you went for your little smoke-out parties. See, in hell, you will remember all the times, all the times that you were invited to give your life to Christ. See, in hell, you remember every time you sat in the pew, but hardened your heart towards God. See, in hell, you remember all the times you were warned about hell and still lived in what you wanted to live, still did what you wanted to do. Like our pastor said, he just wanted to do you. He saw the poor man that he never paid attention to. The poor man that he never fed or gave a dime to. He saw the poor man that he that would beg at his gates. He saw Lazarus, the man he had no mercy for. To see Abraham should have been a sweet sight for this rich man. Because he knew who Abraham was. And he knew where Abraham was. So seeing him from afar, this rich man knew that he was nowhere near Abraham. This rich man knew he was in hell. Where he only saw pain, death, and murder all around him. See, the rich man saw, so he cried out to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in anguish in this fire. Hell is a place of feeling and want. See, in hell, the rich man asked Abraham, would he have pity on him as he suffered in anguish, being tormented in the flames 
by hell. He has have mercy on me and send Lazarus with some water to cool my tongue. See, the rich man was asking Abraham if he could just send Lazarus with just the tip of his finger. Just the tip of his finger with water. As Lazarus begged just for the crumbs from the rich man's table. Now the rich man begs for just the fingertip of water. See, the rich man is consumed with fire. The merciless now seeks mercy, but will not get it. See, the year of the Lord has passed him. In other words, the time for him to repent and accept Jesus has passed from him. In hell, there is no second chances. See, the rich man is in fire, yet not dead. Disfigured, in pain, desiring, needing, wanting, but cannot have because he is now in his eternal state. See, once you die, the soul is separated from the body. But in hell, but hell is only a, a temporal place. A punishment for the lost. See where they were. Oh, oh, they in hell. They await the second. The, they await to stand before judgment and face Christ. Revelations twenty and thirteen and fourteen say. The sea gives open the dead, and who were in it, and who were in it, and the dead and Hades delivered up the dead who were in, the, in them and they were judged each according to his works then the dead and Hades were casted into the lake of fire and this is the second death see this man in hell being tormented in anguish being punished is only his first death he still has judgment coming to him he still has to stand before Christ and give an account for what he did in the body. As if it wasn't enough to be in hell, you still got to get thrown into the lake of fire. See, this man was, was evil. And he would get rewarded for his evilness. In hell, there is no second chances. In hell, there is no coming back. There is no getting out of hell. In hell is a place of reaping. The Bible says, But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things by now he is comforted here and you are in anguish he Abraham reminds him about his life of luxury the rich man was rewarded for his wickedness and for his wicked behavior he was rewarded with hell because he wanted, because he wasted the good things God had gave him. See, in his life, God had given him what he had so that he may use them for his glory. But this wicked man with his selfishness used it for his own edification. See, this man would throw big parties. This man would throw drinking parties, smoking parties, drug parties. This man would probably waste his riches on women. See, this rich man was remembered of what he did in his body. How he had, and how he had no care for the things of God. So I ask you, where is your mind today? Is it on Jesus? 
Or is it the things of this world? How do you use what God gives you? Do you use it for his glory or for your own glory? See, your reward is coming. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't lose your salvation. But you still have to give an account for what you did in the body. The rich man would see Lazarus every day. He knew, he knew him by name, but would not feed him or help him. The rich man was wicked. Abraham reminded him about Lazarus and how he had, no, had nothing and, he, he, and his having everything would not help. And with him having everything, he would still not help Lazarus. And as if he was not tormented enough, Abraham tells him, reminds him of his wickedness. See, you are being tormented. And Lazarus is now being comforted, he tells him. As if he didn't know already. He still reminded him, you are being tormented. And Lazarus is by my side where he receives mercy. To the rich man will receive no mercy because he was not merciful. He will receive no water because he would give no food. The Bible says, and besides all these between us, and you, a great chasm has been set in place. This tells us once you are in hell, there is no more getting out. It is for eternity. There is a great chasm. In other words, there is a great gap that cannot be crossed. It has been fixed by God so that those in hell cannot cross to heaven and those in heaven cannot cross to hell. Is that as if the rich man was looking through a glass window, watching everybody in heaven rejoice, watching everybody in heaven happy, fellowshipping, celebrating with Christ, and he and, and him looking out the window, just wanting, wanting what he can ever have. See, hell is a place where you are being, where you are begging. Hell is a place of unheard prayers. He, an he answered, then I beg, Father, send Lazarus to my family. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. See, hell, hell is a place of begging. And unheard prayers. The rich man is begging, but no one is hearing. He is crying in hell, but it is too late. For your prayers in hell, there is no more praying for your family. There is no more praying for them to be saved. There is no more praying for your friends, your children. Your prayers will not be heard. This man is begging Lazarus to send to his father's house so that his brothers may know about hell. That they may change their evil ways. This man wants to warn his brothers because he knows the way his brothers are. He knows that his brothers are wicked just as he was. See, but he, his request would not be met. Here the rich man says, if Lazarus can come to me, if Lazarus, if Lazarus can't come to me because of the chasm, then let him go to my father's house because I have five brothers. 
that they may be warned of this place. See, they're saying if they see Lazarus, they will repent. For they know him because they too denied him food. See, they too denied him clothes. They too denied him shelter. See, they too denied Lazarus as he sat at the gates. We too need to warn our families about this place. See, the, the rich man's time was up. He had no more chances. But you and I, while our body still flows warm through our bodies, have time to warn our families. Even in heaven, this man did not change his prayer. Wherefore, he, he only cared about his family. You see, when there is other people in this world that are perishing, all he cared about was his five brothers and what was in his household. When he should have been caring about God's people, not just his five brothers. This man was still selfish. This man still cared about himself. See, even in hell, in torment, he still did not change. So Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. See, in, in other words, they have the law of God. Let them hear and obey it. Like today, we have preachers preaching. We have preaching on TV, preaching on the radio, preaching on cell phones. We got churches in every corner. We have DVDs, books. We have Bibles. The Bible is global. Everywhere you go, you have the Bible. Yeah. See, Abraham says, see, let them listen to the preachers. Let them make their own decision. You see, there will be no sign. This is, this is on their hands now. They must obey the word of God. They must change for themselves. They will not get no signs. See, a lot of times we try to warn our families, but they do not listen. But then they got at other places where they hear from, and they still do not listen. So Abraham here tells them, let them listen for themselves now. They will not get no sign. So if they don't listen for themselves, then two will go to hell. And he tells them, Father, Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead will go to them, they will repent. And he said, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone from the dead is raised. You see, they have Moses and the prophets in the Old Testament. See, the Old Testament testifies to Christ. The Old Testament leads to the New Testament when Christ comes. So he says that they will not listen to what they say. And it talks about Christ is risen from the dead. How then will they believe if someone is raised from the dead and goes to them? You see, in our life here, we saw, we see, we know Christ rose from the dead. You see, and we still do not believe. So he is telling them they will not believe Moses then they will not believe at all. You see, for we had Christ who came down 40 and not some generations. He was born of a virgin, became man. See, Christ lived 33 years We have his word. We have his followers. 
we hear Jesus all day long. Our families hear Jesus all day long. But they will still not repent. So are we doing our job? Are we letting them know who Jesus is? Or we just keep to ourselves and be timid and scared to tell them what the Bible says? Well, as I get ready to take my seat, let me tell you about Jesus if you don't know him. See, he came in the form of man. He came down and performed miracles. He came down, healed the sick, healed the blind. He made the lame walk. He healed many illnesses and sicknesses. See, he came and was sinless, committed no sin. But because of our sinful nature, he stood in front of Pilate where the crowds yelled, crucify him. When he had no sin, he had no fault. He was blameless. See, he was God. He could have walked away from it. But because he loved us, the reason why he came was to take our sins upon himself. So, in obedience, he picked up his cross. He walked up Calvary's hill where they put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet to stretch them high and stretch them wide. He hung between heaven and earth. They put a spear on his side. See, our Savior bled. Our Savior suffered. Our Savior was whipped, was beaten. They put a crown of thorns on his head. See, our Savior died for us. But like we sang earlier, that's not how the story ends. Three days later, our Savior got up again. He took the sting out of death so that we would not have to spend eternity in hell like this rich man did. So my prayer is, if you don't know Christ today, that you may give your life to him. Amen.